Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news for the week ending the 1st of September 2019. There have been a huge amount of roadmap changes and we've got a new giveaway for September as well, as well as the uh, winner of the August giveaway. And we're going to talk about that along with the summary of the week's news as well. Star Citizen Alpha 3.6.2e is currently on PTU. It's Wave 2, meaning that it's not just uh, Evocardi subs and Concierge. There are some of the more active uh, sort of like bug reporters and game players of Star Citizen um, being invited to that patch. We should see an open PTU for everyone and probably the live build by the end of this week. I am going to uh, be having an 890 jump party when the patch goes live and anyone around on my Discord is invited. New roadmap stuff. So there was a video and FAQ about CIG moving to a staggered development model with six month cycles of teams working on branches rather than uh, three month sort of cycles for both Squadron 42 and Star Citizen's persistent universe. We will be seeing a major update every quarter as well. So don't worry about, oh no, it's every six months. No, 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 it is every three months still. Um, and we should actually see more polished playable patches with features that have more content because of this. In the short term, Alpha 3.7 is is getting a bit cut down but after that you should see more uh, feature ready patches and more playable patches better polish less bugs uh, features that have got a lot more meat on their bones basically the way they do this is have uh, teams split into two groups when they're looking at branches for the game so one will be working on the next patch so 3.7 in this case and then another team will be working on 3.8 or set of teams on 3.8 and then when the team finishes and gets 3.7 out, they move directly on to 3.9 and then they still have the teams working on 3.8. When they finish, they work directly on 4.0. So they basically keep on moving like that, an overlapping six month cycle. In my opinion, this will probably see us having less uh, features in each patch, but each of those features that we see in each patch in the future being a lot more playable, having a lot more content on being much closer to final intentions, being a lot less rushed as well. So hopefully we shouldn't see as much slip on roadmaps. We should see uh, patches that are a bit more uh, playable, but we'll have to wait and see. In fact, CIG has also released updated roadmaps for up to 4.0, so the Q2 2020 patch. It is mid-planning at the moment, so we will see some uh, changes on those roadmaps and we will see lots of additions to them because they're working out where features will currently fall in those patches. Uh, this has also caused the Squadron 42 internal beta to now be targeted at Q3 2020, effectively being pushed back three months. Alpha 3.7 still has some great features, uh, including mission sharing and ship rentals and that sort of stuff now as well. So uh, it's still going to be a good patch in my opinion, but we will have to wait and see whether this is a, a good decision for the game development. I think on paper it looks like it is, but we'll have to wait and see. This week's sneak peek was at some stealthy gear that looks very much inspired by Predator. Very cool stuff there. Uh, looks like snow gear. Maybe we'll start to see this sort of stuff around Microtech when we have it in game. Uh, the Game Glass and Corsair August giveaway winner is Rabid Lemons. Congratulations. The reason I said it almost with like a question mark at the end is because he's got some elite speak going on his name with capitals and, and numbers and stuff going on there. Uh, September's giveaway is for an Anvil Carrick, and this is donated by the Org Ultra. More about that at the end of the video, and you can find links to more information about all of that down below. Inside Star Citizen looked at quite a few topics last week. They are working on livery for Vanguard variants. Materials libraries are being built out um, and streamlined so that we will have lots and lots more materials uh, in game and we should see higher fidelity and much better looking things. The Moby Glass is getting customization features so you can um, have different chats colored but this will lead on to lots and lots and lots more customization for that maybe glass fes weapons are having more customizations coming along with them as well with silencers flash riders compensators and more they are splicing more animations and dynamic audio together so we have sort of like appropriate sounds for things like hero landings when you're jumping long distances and falling in armor cig have also been spending a lot of time reworking uis and this is a major thing that they're doing at the moment um, they're, they're redoing all these UIs throughout the game, pushing them towards their final intentions for HUDs, multifunction displays, interactions with the world, with consoles, with screens, all this sort of stuff. And we will be seeing these things in the near future. Obviously, we've got the Gladius HUD, which has been been like a prototyped version of some of the stuff they want to get there. 
Um, but they're getting lots and lots more stuff in for the cockpit experience as well. Star Citizen Live looked at modular assets for space stations. Props and architecture are inspired from various sci-fi tropes and things like Star Wars. And um, pretty much every sci-fi thing you can think of has been somehow used uh, or influenced Star Citizen's props or ships or whatever. They are easily now able to generate and fill areas with content now. For space stations, they can generate their interiors with a few clicks of buttons. This creates a procedural station that looks like it's a living environment now as well. They have a huge amount of variety even now. These tools will have even more assets and architecture added to them as they sort of build out more and more and more. And that's going to allow for more variety, more types of stations and more interesting set dressing for them. Currently, we have more sort of like the industrial used type stations in game, but there's going to be lots and lots more. Some cleaner ones, some ones that have entirely different architecture. Devs can hand place and tweak these areas. Groups of items can be placed as a prefab and snap into place with the rest of the environment where sensible, but they can um, fully edit these by hand if they need to as well. But the idea with their modular um, and procedural techniques they use is that they can rapidly fill out huge amounts of area very quickly, but that doesn't mean they do it slapdash. They will generate like a hundred stations and choose one for a particular location. They'll go, ah, well, let's, let's make loads of stations, bam, 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 bam. Uh, that one looks really cool, bam. Let's put it in there and then tweak it if we need to. So there's still a load of stuff being done by devs and by hand. It is procedurally assisted, basically the techniques they use. The Nautilus is the latest concept ship for Star Citizen. This has been talked about a lot recently. It's a mine layer. We've got mine laying gameplay, mine sweeping gameplay, all for the future. This and staggered development should be getting some uh, FAQs, uh, frequently asked questions, uh, answered in the coming few days. There is a Star Citizen Live episode uh, on the 6th of September focusing on uh, staggered development and exactly what that means for the project. If you have questions for that or if you've got questions uh, about the Nautilus and Minelang, I will put the links down below in the collection threads for questions for that. Uh, if you have any questions for me or about anything we've talked about, please leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want more info on staggered development and the roadmaps and what actually uh, that means for the project, then please check out my videos, which I will also link below. Every month we have a ship giveaway for September 2019. It's for an Anvil Carrack, the mighty exploration ship. It is being donated by the organization Ultra. They are a chaotic, neutral, multi-role org where they encourage their members to focus on their speciality uh, and find their speciality and they provide them the freedom to play however they want in ultra you're not just another drone you become part of a family is the idea links below to check them out they are recruiting to be in for a chance of winning that ship just comment on any of my videos made during september though a random comment will be chosen as uh, the winner more details below i am also shilling for nordvpn and shadow gaming pcs so um use the code board gamer for discounts there nordvpn in a world of censorship and privacy issues, VPNs allow you to browse the net and play games in more safety. NordVPN has many benefits over free VPNs, and that's why I shill for it. Uh, some of you also might be interested in shadow cloud gaming stuff. Uh, this allows you an alternative to sort of like buying and maintaining your own gaming PC. You can stream a custom Windows 10 environment to devices like your phone, a laptop, or a crappier lesser pc and bam it's fantastically powerful and it's maintained and hardware is regularly updated for you it's a fantastic service shadow cloud gaming certainly has quite a big future ahead of it if you'd like to further support my channel please consider subscribing sharing this video ringing the youtube bell so you get notifications when a video goes live this is a channel that is funded by the community via donations patreon members youtube members um, and anyone else that wants to get involved with comments and helping thank you to everyone that goes the extra mile Take care and I will see you in the verse.